Hello, everybody. Welcome to the NX Show here on twitch.tv slash the NX Show and all of our Mixer pages at some point and also hosted through twitch.tv slash Ray Apollo. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Darrigan. Alongside me is not that retro code, but the wise Wisconsinite, Jesse Douglas. How's it going, everyone? And the streamer's champion, Ray Apollo. Hello. How's everyone doing? Everybody have a good week? Everybody have a good good week? Great week? Yes. So I finished so two games this week. Heck what? yeah, bud. Two weeks. Yes. Two games. Two games. One week. Finished them. I mean, it's just, you know, all the time rolled together. Yeah, well, huh. I, <laughs> I hear you there. Uh, time. Uh, time is the biggest factor in in this uh, in this in this field. If you, mm-hmm, if you, mm-hmm, if you say mm-hmm. so. Uh, I did not finish any games this week, uh, but I've gotten closer. So good, uh, Jesse. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I got I got some uh, gaming and some a decent amount of gaming in this week. Nice. At least at least played a, c- a couple of things, some newer stuff, and nice. went back to some old stuff. But I'll get into all that once we <laughs> get to that point. Nice. Nice. Uh, I played some games, but mostly I've been setting up new, uh, new projects and new, new things for and trying to fix our website because it looks generic AF, as the kids say, uh, <laughs> because WordPress changed all their pricing models. So, yeah. yes, because now right. appara- apparently you have to pay the premium fee to change font colors now. So. Wow. Uh, we had a dark background and all of our fonts changed to a dark color. And I was oh. like, I was like, cool. Now I got to fix this. Uh, all right, dude. Yeah, I know. I was like, great. Thank you. Thank you for the email warning. Thank you for the, the updates. Just kidding. Didn't get any of that. But anyways, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm trying to fix the websites and, and trying to manage all this stuff. It's like, it's like, I feel like I can get, I, when I when I get like two steps ahead, something just roadblocks me, and I have to take ten steps back. Ugh. <laughs> Technology, everybody. Happens. Yeah. When the world runs on money, things change without you knowing. Let's put it that 100%. way. And then when technology is involved, woof, boy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you didn't know, this is the NX show. Oh, uh, by the way, I should say that Ed's out of town. That's why he's not hosting. So yeah, he's or, not here. He's he's I miss him already. He's 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 at uh, choir rehearsals for church or something. So uh, I'm proud of you. So I'm proud of that boy. Proud of you, Ed. <laughs> we miss you. Uh, you can follow him at that retro code on Twitter, by the way. So uh, anyways, welcome to the NX show. Each and every Saturday, we get together to talk about video games and other shenanigans. The show is available on youtubecom dot com slash NX Project. Wow. Spotify and your podcast service of choice. Remember to review us and rate us, subscribe, share. It helps with discoverability. Uh, follow us on Facebook, join our Facebook and Discord communities, and also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the NX Show. All links will be available in the description of this episode. Uh, also visit codenamenx.com, but I would wait like two weeks for that so I can fix it. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Uh, we're gonna we're just gonna jump right in because we are kind of time constrained a little bit. Uh, but we're just gonna jump into what we've been playing. I think all of us have been uh, playing Gears, Gears Five. Mm-hmm, and Ray, mm-hmm. I know I saw you finished Gears Five. Uh, I finished a campaign. Yeah, I did. I'm seeing a lot of people really saying that this is actually somewhat of a game of the year contender, which makes me very excited. It is in my top ten. Absolutely. Uh, Goodness gracious, I had so much fun with the game. Did not expect. I just didn't. They they have some surprises that I did not expect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, usually those games are pretty just straightforward, but I was like, oh, no. Uh, wow. But no, I just I can't wait to talk with more people about how this game ends. Yeah. I well, can't wait. hopefully hopefully we can finish it at some point at some point this next week jesse so or the next couple weeks so we can talk about it i know jesse you're going to be in disney next weekend so uh mm-hmm. but maybe maybe ray and i will talk about it uh <laughs> so yeah gears man it sounds like it sounds like the coalition is is kind of taking that step that you know playstation started taking last gen with like 
really exploring storytelling in a in a meaningful way almost uh you know and and yeah. that's what i'm getting from a lot of the stories from that people are talking about for gears so mm-hmm. uh i'm very very excited and haha <laughs> ed's not here to tell me that yeah <laughs> uh, i'm just kidding Ed. i like to mess with him because he's not a big sony fan so uh yeah, <laughs> yeah i i just uh, like my my big thing is i like once uh, once i'm done once i get back from disney and stuff like i i really want to um once i get a chance pick up control and make sure i really put time into that because same you know from a lot of people it sounds like that's gonna be one of the one of the top contenders for game of the year as well you know it's like a lot a lot of people are are saying that's one of the best games so far for them yeah out this uh, year. it's one of the best games that xbox has put out in a while yeah exclusively uh just straight up I've I had fun from start to finish with that campaign. It oh, plays yeah, it well. Can. It sounds good. The sound design in that game is some of the best that they've ever done. Um, it looks incredible as usual since they've done this since four. Four they decided let's make this game look incredible, and they've done it again. This game looks phenomenal. There's a there's a section towards the end of the game where it's like, oh my god, they saved this for near the end of the game, and it's incredible. Like it's it's god, it looks so good. Um, yeah. But I love it. the characters are interesting. Um, the story is just getting more and more interesting. I did not think that they could keep making the stories it like more interesting. Like you, you would think that this world will be tired by now because it's the same world. It's the same consistent story since one. Especially and somehow. Especially since this is the sixth game, you know. Exactly. <laughs> this. So somehow they've made this more interesting, to, at least to me. Yeah. So I, I feel like Microsoft and Coalition really, really, really nailed this one. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I feel like. You know, there's a lot of Force Awakens uh, uh, analogies towards Gears 4, which is like this is this is a really solid Gears game. Let's just let's just double down on what makes Gears great. And this mm-hmm. this game, even from what I've played, is like let's let's do something with this. Now that we've perfected the Gears formula, let's move this direction and see if we can really push the envelope. I think making the campaign 60 frames a second also made a big difference because like oh yes like i said jesse and i recently played through gears 4 and like it's it's Mm -hmm. very gears but it still feels like gears you know a very Mm -hmm. like it feels like gears 3 you know which doesn't feel bad but this feels like like the movement feels great it feels more responsive super smooth it is it is like buttery smooth like you know the transitioning from cover like picking up weapons it all just feels and works really well because you know at first i was like "Eh, i'm not gonna play any multiplayer because you know it's gears and so i'm like I don't need to, but then I I did, and I was like, oh man, this is this is this feels good and it's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, dodgeball, the dodgeball uh, game mode, like, is still like I think one of the best uh, game modes, uh, you know, for for a uh, shooter. Like, I I would like to see that kind of game mm-hmm. mode in more games, honestly. Like, yeah, I, I love the whole idea of like the you know you get a kill you can bring a person back into the to the match kind of thing. Yeah, dodgeball is a really cool yeah, mode. Dodge, I love, yeah, I love dodgeball so much. I played a ton of it in Gears Four, and now I'm like, I um, my thing is though is like I want to finish the campaign before I move into multiplayer. <laughs> Even like Horde and Escape, right? Like I want to move into. Into... I will say it was it was easier to play multiplayer just coming right out of the campaign because you've been doing all this stuff for so long in the campaign. I was like, right. oh, this I just know how to play this now, uh, which mm-hmm. was good. I'm just but I, I'm sure I'll give it three more days and everybody's going to be godlike because I was like, I was actually getting kills in this mode. And I was like, oh, OK, but yeah, give it three days. Everybody will be godlike and it won't be any fun. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I still no and I still think Dave or Jack is the real hero in this. <laughs> in this game. Old Jack. <laughs> oh, Jack! They they wouldn't have been able to get anywhere without him in the beginning. So, uh, they, like, I, I feel like he's the Jack real. is literally a, a, a cl- he's a crutch for them. Like yeah. he, he Jack can do yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah, like they wouldn't be able to do anything. No, without like him. It, half the stuff that they needed to do in the story, you can't do without Jack. So yeah, yeah exactly. without Jack, he's they're the <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. i was joking when me and Corey were playing i'm like J- jack uh dave's the real hero in this game <laughs> yeah yeah uh 
man, that first that first like it really opens up to like in that second yeah. chapter after the uh, you visit the camp. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a kind yeah. of a major event that happens in the camp. When like it's they showed it in the trailer, the original trailer, right? But you didn't see what was like who the person was. And like, mm-hmm. you know, once you once you see that, it like adds a whole new thing because that character was fun in the first game, you know, like you like it was just a fun character. But like, you know, now moving forward, it's like oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to, to finish this campaign. So uh, how how long did it take you to finish Ray about? Mm, you know, that's a good question. I didn't really pay attention to how long it, it took. I know I played it for probably that's all I played for like four days. Um, and I was putting in maybe five hours each time. So about about 20 hours, maybe. Maybe. Oh, wow. Uh, which ain't bad. Um, I feel like that... you finish it faster if you just, you know, crush through it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I mean, it, look, I'm, I've am i been exploring every nook and cranny to try to find the collectibles. Because like... Oh, yeah. I got, I... I got 85% of the collectibles my first playthrough. So yeah. it's like... I, it's not like I was just kind of running through or shooting everything, going story, 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 and then, wait, how far are you? Uh, or only to like the second, like get almost to the second. Level. Well, yeah, you went, you play, you've been playing it. Yeah, I played a little bit more than Jesse has, but I'm I just wanted to like get to. The, I just got through like that first part of the open worldy section. Okay, so good, you can say that. So I was like, so um, when I got to the open world stuff, I did everything that was in the open world so like it's not like i just sped through my like every time we got an open world spot i did everything there um so i got all the jack upgrades everything yeah um which is awesome yeah. which that's that's uh like this game like is already one of those games where i'm like okay i just i just gotta play it and experience mm-hmm. it for myself i can't listen to what other people are saying you really, because you really, you really because shouldn't. too many people are are giving well i'm hearing more positive than negative but like some of the shows that that i listen to are like we're 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 coming down pretty hard on the open world section stuff saying that it was kind of useless and 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 blah 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 and and it's like well but a lot of people are saying that it's it's actually like where some of the best visuals are and like some you know like that that it serves a purpose enough so it's uh, it, like i just don't i don't like listening to what other people say about things anyways because i i like nine times out of ten i would end up not enjoying or trying something that i probably would enjoy if i if i went i i just i don't know i don't know what it is but i like a lot of times my my outlook on things is usually the opposite of like a majority of people like I just like there's a lot of things that I like that a lot of people just really didn't like, so it's hard for me to listen to what what critics and think people say about really anything, movies, games. Yeah, so, like the PC but, gaming show and E three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was uh, one of the best ones there and no, people are like, uh no, 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 no. But no, I feel you it's just I, I I'm kind of and I I'm kind of in a similar vein. There are some things that I will if I have somebody whose opinion I trust, I will like listen to them. If they say something's yeah. not worth your time, I'm not going to waste my time because I feel like um I value their opinion and their opinions are decent enough that it's like, okay, well if this person's like I did not have a good time with this, man, I might not either. Uh but in most cases, so the other 80% of the time, I'm like, nah, I'm going to play it and if I like it, I like it and if I don't well, that sucks, um, but you know, it also is just kind of like trying to protect my money, trying to protect my wallet yeah. is what it comes down to. Yeah. You know, I don't like yeah. to spend money all willy nilly. So if I I'm, buy something that sucks, I do. You, I have a little remorse sometimes. I'm more uh, so willing, I like to try to protect myself. I'm more willing to like try stuff on Game Pass now though than I was. Oh that. yeah, hundred. Uh, that's why yeah. I feel like it's such. A, I mean, we we keep talking about this. We we evangelize Game Pass all the time because it's true. Yeah. Uh, I love oh, that song. Game Pass, you exactly. brought us so many games. <laughs> yeah. I love it so much because I can try games and not feel bad about it. But it's like with Gears, I would have paid a full sixty dollars for that. That was a that's a, a game that I would have paid good money I mean, for. I'm still like I still want to get the physical copy at some point eventually because mm-hmm. I like I said I'm I've gone mostly all digital, but like for the franchises mm-hmm. I like that 
you know, maybe don't require an online connection all the time, except for now gears. I don't know, because we're all playing on game pass. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I still like to have the physical copy of the games that I love. And gears is a series that I have the physical copies of, because I like that series so much. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and gears five is one I plan on getting probably like, Black Friday sale or around my birthday or Christmas or something, you know, just yeah. to have that physical copy. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm loving what I've been playing in Gears. Uh, it's it's man, it's a visually stunning game. I I don't really know how a game on Xbox One can look this good. <laughs> like, and and like, and I'm not saying that in like a derogatory way towards any other games. Like, but like a, a game I put a ton of time into this year was Assassin's Creed Odyssey, right? And like that game looked great, but like. Gears Five feels like it's like next level. You, that, that's the power of, and I feel like that's one hundred percent the power of a first party game yeah. with teams of people who work on this hardware specifically. That's where that I was is the, going. That's with the it. power of an exclusive to me. Uh, yeah. With an exclusive, you can do so much more work. Yeah, that's, uh, and that's yeah. why I feel like exclusives are important. Still, yeah. people are like, oh, exclusives suck. <laughs> no, exclusives are important because. Yeah. First of all, they give you a reason to buy these machines. <laughs> yeah. Second of all, uh, these teams can now fo- pour everything they know about this one architecture into a game and make it the best game possible. Right. Because, that, because that, you know, e- even with like, you know, I think plus, you know, Microsoft's first party stuff has a little bit of more of a challenge because they got to scale to all kinds of PCs and X- mm-hmm. Xbox One base and, and, and which they actually did uh, something really smart where like, yeah, there's an Xbox One X patch for Gears 5, obviously, but on S and and base, the game runs at 30 frames a second, no matter mm-hmm. how you play it, which is, you know, which is fine, but like, you know, that I think that's that's the power of the X where like it can just take on that extra patch and like really make everything look fantastic and and I still I guess I don't really know what the potential for the X is and has it actually I know. been like I like have we like even that, reached potential yet? Exactly. Like that's what like, I'm saying. Potential for the for the machine because I'm like like we really didn't get a whole lot that this was like pushing this machine to like uh, its limits from what I I've th- heard or seen. Plus, like yeah. and, like okay, Forza Forza always looks fantastic, and car games right. are always the games you show show to mm-hmm. to show off the console. But like cars cars look great because they're smooth. They have mm-hmm. like you know they they don't have. You a put lot the right of text on them; they look incredible. Yeah, yeah, they you don't know? have a lot of texture to them, right? And like everything is flat, a flat decal or just paint or whatever. And like, you know, Gears is really the first thing, the first first party game that I've like absolutely been wowed by. You know, like Halo Five, like Halo Five's cutscenes look fantastic, right? Like it, I think mm-hmm. Halo Five's cutscenes are amazing. But like Gears Five overall, like the environments, the weapons, the the uh crumbling guts and stuff like that kind of mm-hmm. it, everything just looks fantastic the crumbling of of the the covers the cover system and like everything just looks really really well done and the coalition did fantastic i can't believe it how did. great it did Gears such a good job I, I love it i'm just like i'm just very i was like if this is the if this is setting the bar for how future xbox exclusives will be we are in for a very good next gen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really hope that this is them setting the bar. I mean, but it also could be because we're at the end of the generation that we are getting stuff like this. And this happens all the time. And we get all excited for the next gen. But then we don't get games like this for another five years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because well, they're let's... relearning the architecture for a different system. And uh, so who knows? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, let's. Let's hope that I I think that we'll we'll see uh, pushing of the hardware like a little bit sooner than mm-hmm. than later this next gen just because like really ultimately there there like there isn't like computers aren't really that much far ahead of what you know the, what it sounds like the next consoles are gonna offer because. Like first off, they're gonna be offering like hard drives that have the quicker loading speed, which is kind of even gonna be newer for PCs as well. So, like on some levels like that, they're gonna be kind of neck and neck, you know, with mm. with PCs. So, you know, like I I honestly think that that we'll see 
just because of the fact that you know like i still don't think 8k is really anything that to really care about ever honestly i mean we barely but, do it for, we're barely doing 4k barely yeah. i mean yeah. I, don't, so, I don't even think gears runs at true 4k i think it's 1440p upscaled to keep that 60 frames because they right. they're, yeah. they're using that scaled resolution to keep the frame rate up which is yeah. which is what Halo did also, and I think yeah. cra- I think Crackdown three did to an extent, but Crackdown's graphical style was so simple that like it didn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, well, that's it the matter. thing is it doesn't matter because people are praising Gears five as the best looking game on consoles today. That's including all consoles, yeah. <laughs> like you know, like I mean, like so. I, think, I mean, it, I. I I think a close comparison to Gears, like the the game I've been most impressed by until Gears this gen was Horizon. Uh, Horizon. Fair enough. Yeah. It's a very and, very like, good looking game. Like I thought, I thought God of War looked really good, but I still think Horizon is the benchmark for it. Well, I guess I, guess I would say I, I would I would I would edge God of War. God of War looked incredible, but Uncharted also looked incredible. So, yeah. frick, I mean, yeah, those games all look great. Yeah. I, it, <laughs> But like I'm in turn like in terms of what I guess I guess okay. those three games okay. kind of uh, you know okay. kind of go through a, a preference at that point right like okay I kind of prefer Horizon over God of War and and Uncharted you know but a lot of people like I'm yep. not gonna sit here and say no you're wrong because God you chose God of War over Horizon right like I think Sony has enough wiggle room where you can pick a preference of what game you wanna think looks looks the best right as and then you you just look at the Xbox lineup at this point, and you're like, "Well, Forza looks fantastic, but those are cars." And then Gears, which looks fantastic. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of color in Gears, which made me happy. Yeah, so, yeah, oh, yeah. Especially that first area when you're d- diving uh-huh. down into like so much color. I'm they like, were like, "Hey, you want to talk about color? We're gonna give you all that, of it." That for, <laughs> yeah. well, like Gear, Gears has always been talked about as like this franchise that's been. Brown on brown, brown, brown yeah. red, yeah. brown, gray, brown, red. You know, like, mm-hmm. and the, to drop you down in this green, luscious jungle was like that's that was oh, a man. smart move to open there's up a, this game. There's a mm, wait, no. So Corey, you've probably seen. Wait, no, you haven't seen that yet. Never mind. I'm not gonna say anything. There's a another area in this game where they do the color red very, very well. Uh, I was very happy. Like, it was just so cool. So yeah. Look forward to that. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, I think Jesse and I are going to stream a little bit of it tonight. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, I do look forward to that. I, I do like the uh, the wind surf board thing, too. The this, That thing is amazing. I, it's one of the coolest things it could have added to the game. I was like, this is so simple, yet it's hella cool. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> I really like it. And it doesn't control uh-huh. bad either. You know, like I, No, I, it actually controls really well. I know. Does yeah. it control uh-huh. like the warthog kind of like where it's like you? I would say even better. Yeah. Actually. Okay. All yeah. right. Even even better. So. Uh, yeah. Um, All right. So, uh, what any else? Other games I've been playing? Oh, I was I was gonna ask you if you were playing anything Ooh. else. Yeah, I finished my first playthrough of Fire Emblem. Ooh. <laughs> I, Finally, I'm, I'm still grinding. Uh, so I had I think it was what sixty plus hours. For my first playthrough done, and hot dang, that ending was not expecting it, but it was, God, that game was fun. I had a did, really good time you, with that did game. You, did you? Did you? Did you get married? Did you have have a anime baby? Uh, yes, apparently. An uh, anim- I didn't an ask for that, baby? but I totally got one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I married my wife, Fu Manuela, and it was the best. Um, oh, jeez. Because I thought it. I don't know, man. I thought it was weird. I was like, I'm going to marry one of these kids who I was their teacher. Now I'm good. I'm going to marry the other adult. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I, re- I really did like her. But no, I just... Still, I, I'm still, I really, chasing, still chasing Dorothea right now. Oh, no. Oh, well, that won't be hard. No, <laughs> it's chasing not. waterfalls, Kari. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I love I love Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem was awesome. Uh, I think the only time I was like annoyed with a weird difficulty spike, per se, was um, the second to last battle. Yeah. Um, there is a spike in difficulty where I was like, "What the actual f are you doing right now?" <laughs> so, um, I mean, of course, I, my first playthrough I played on casual because I just wanted to see how the story was going to go. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I got through all of it with everybody because um, I would I would have lost a really good unit in that battle 
uh, because of just what they throw at you in that last one. I was like, what in the world? Right. But I loved it. It was a good time. Uh, definitely still also top 10 for me this year, maybe even top five. Um, I don't know if I plan on doing another uh, run, at least up until the DLC comes out in April. But because I'm like, that's just so much time in one mm-hmm. game, and there's yeah. so many games I want to play, uh, yeah. especially with Dragon Quest coming out. I'd much rather play Dragon Quest. <laughs> No one will blame you. <laughs> I, I, I want to finish this before Zelda comes out. That's my goal. Good luck, because I kept saying that. I was like, yeah, I'll finish this before Essential comes out. Well, I'm, six, I'm, six, I'm 63 hours in now, but oh, I keep, I'm keep i grinding because I keep hearing. I'm like, there's a huge difficulty spike within well, the last so couple of battles. And I'm like, level, well, I need everybody to. Everybody on my team was at least level 45. Oh, jeez. I, um, I think I have four characters over level 50. Yeah. And then I think you're. You're over leveled. You better you better go. But no, but but I also have three characters under level thirty. <laughs> Cause I never I use mean, them. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have to use them all. I just sometimes I took I would take people off the field if they weren't high enough level for me. Because I'm like, well, you're just gonna get one shot. So I would just take them out. Because everybody else could tank and be fine. Yeah. Um, so I just I don't know, but I had everybody at least mid forties. And we we kind of the the last battle, if you like actually use strategy. I could steamroll the last battle because I just I was look I looked at this map and I was like, there are two ways this could go. I could go one way and literally fight everything on this effing map, <laughs> which would be a bad time, or I could use my brain and actually use some strategy and do this like I wouldn't call it easy, but smarter, and it just works. So I don't know. Like I was really happy that they gave me some options for strategy in that. So it was good. It nice. worked out for me. And nice. then, I, like I said, the ending I got, I was very happy with. I got, a, I think I got, I don't know if it's like the good ending, but it really did seem like it. It's a very good ending. <laughs> Is it, it are, there are multiple endings then? Uh, oh, so, I mean, from what I've well, seen. I mean, like, I know there's probably multiple there, endings. Like, endings each house has house. an ending, but then yeah. apparently, like, I don't know if it's just Black Eagles specifically. There's two possible endings for the Black Eagles, I think. There but are, I don't think because... There are because there's a point in the in the middle of the story where you have to because the the Black Eagles is like you either take I, I don't want to spoil yeah, anything yeah. yeah you don't want to spoil anything but I know what you mean and uh right in yeah. the middle there's two distinct paths you could take and you and have I, to choose I, I one or the other I don't know which one is I don't know which one's the secret ending on that one <laughs> so like I, wait which which choice so I'm probably gonna look it up and be like which one was the secret ending um I don't know so. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, Jesse, what are you even playing besides Gears? And all right, yeah, I I made a list here. And he so, made a list. Okay. good job. Yeah. Jesse. So I I ended up uh, like I had a whole bunch of points um, from from buying a couple of games and then uh, the rewards. Like uh, when I bought Blair Witch, it that was one of the games that was. Uh, like featured so uh, as long as i claimed it i got like an extra like three thousand points besides the points you get for buying the game you know like because the way microsoft works or whatever when you buy a game you get you get reward points uh and then they have like a whole big page of of different uh things you can do so like i i just played a couple of games and got like all you got to do is get achievements or, like one achievement and then you'll get like 200 points or whatever so i i had got a bunch of points um to save to, uh, get the rest of what i needed to get a 10 dollar gift card uh for microsoft and so then i ended up buying uh trials rising finally and i I don't know trials for whatever reason I've like since the first one I've just been like it's been a it's one of those games that I just love playing and get like hooked on and uh, it's just I think it's just because it's pretty basic and fun and it's fun to try to beat your uh, your friends uh, times and all that stuff and try to be the top of the leaderboard or whatever for for how fast uh, you beat beat the level or whatever. So I played I played that and I'm really enjoying it a lot. There's it's got the cool like feature where you can play like actual multiplayer where everyone's driving at the same time and it's like layered. So you, like you see all the other people you're playing against like layered in the background. Um 
and one of the games I played uh, for to get achievements to to get the points that I needed was Devil May Cry Five. Good. And and like I'm actually really enjoying that game a lot. That game like, is still currently my game of the year. Yeah, I I I definitely want to uh, like unfortunately or not unfortunately like i'm looking forward to gears as well but like i think what i might do is try to um i want to try to finish blair witch um for sure because i'm really loving that game it's it's giving me that the uh alan wake you know fix that i that i've been wanting for i've been wanting a new alan wake game for a long time so like this is really like giving me that fix of of like what alan wake was um i do need to get to control like i said once i get back from my my uh my uh trip and stuff i that that'll be one of the next games i'm looking at getting but but yeah devil may cry uh yeah i definitely want to play a play more of that um before our um game of the year talk because it, it like yeah like really out of all the DMC games I I have really only enjoyed the the actual DMC game mm. the you know I liked that one a lot um so yeah but I'm enjoying it a lot so like I like the characters I like what the story's doing so far and stuff I mean I'm not super far into it but you know it's it's and it looks nice it looks really good <laughs> It it should, really it should get further into it. Trust me, it, it only gets more wild. Yeah, it's and wild. Then, mm-hmm. And then I actually went back. Uh, me and Ed, Ed did like a little show thing where he we uh, stream co-streamed or streamed in the morning on on Mixer, and we had a discussion. Is uh, whenever whenever you uh, you join with Ed, he's he always wants to turn it into a show, which is fine. So so we we he picked a topic and we talked about we talked about a, a couple of things. I think he wants to upload that eventually or whatever to to our uh, to our channel. I think I'm not quite sure, but um, I played Anthem while while we were <laughs> while we were uh, talking, and I went back to it, and I'm I actually is enjoying that quite a bit. Like I feel like I feel like. Um, like one of the issues that I had when when the game first came out is it felt like a like your weapon like everything was just very bullet spongy and it and it like what made it seem like it was hard to like a hard game to play by yourself um but I, I don't know if it's just the guns I had or what but but I, it felt like I could do a lot more by myself this time uh, than than when I had previously been playing it, so I don't know if they balanced things a little bit more and made it so you d- they don't have to force you to play with other people. Um, so I don't know. I again I I didn't play a whole lot of it, uh, but I was enjoying it you know more than than the last time I had played it. So I I would like to go back to that and at least try to finish the storyline. Because I honestly, I'm not very far into it. I just mostly, when I played Anthem before, I would just, you know, screw around and look for uh, the consumables or collectible things, the stuff that you basically like need to to uh, create things or whatever in the currencies and all that kind of stuff. I didn't really pay attention to the story stuff too much, so I still have quite a bit to do in that. And then the the last uh, game that I'll talk about was I I ended up uh, playing Creature in the Well, and I'm really enjoying that game a lot. Like I I like pinball, you know, pinball type games. Like even I think I have a one of the pinball game, the pinball FX games downloaded on my Xbox. Like I'll even play those every once in a while, but. But it's it's a really cool concept of like basically all the bumper things and all that all have are worth you know like you have to hit hit the bumper things with the these balls these like glowing orbs of of power or whatever or light 
and they bounce everywhere and you have like one weapon that can charge them up and and make them more powerful so when they bounce around they last longer um and then you like as you bu- hit the bumpers you're collecting the power from all this stuff and then you use that power to unlock doors so you basically you've got to go you like and it's got all these branching paths and 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 there's like secret doors that you can unlock and you know and it's just it's an interesting story too like the creature that in the well like you kind of meet right away in the beginning and it's just like this really creepy looking thing that's like just a giant that lives down in the dark parts of this cave like area of where all this is taking place and he's just like always taunting you all the time as you're going through different areas and and like they have like a kind of like a like a almost like a mini like boss style thing in like towards the end of of like each level because like what what it is is like they're these robots were were uh running this this like power facility or whatever exactly it is and i think like everyone left or something happened to them and so the people like were just like scared and all that stuff and and the people in this town outside of this cave uh like just all hiding their their homes and stuff like that and and so you like you're coming back to try to redo what what your, the robots were before or something. I, I don't quite understand exactly what's going on yet because it's still kind of early, but like, and just like he like taunted me at one point and said, Oh, like, you know, where have you been for the last whatever years? Like, I'm, I'm their savior now and, and like, you know, I'm their Ooh. protector or something like that. And, and yeah, it's, it's it's an interesting story and and it's kind of just unique in the way that it mixes the whole uh pinball uh style stuff with with uh combat and uh things like that so it's it's definitely a game to check out if you have game pass so nice all right nice and it's got a cool look cool look to it art wise so awesome awesome uh, is that is that all you've been playing, Jesse? Yep, pretty okay. much. Uh, well, I mean, I haven't really been playing much else other than Gears, and uh, I played a little bit of Destiny last night, but there's nothing really new to talk about in Destiny. Uh, not until, yet. Not yeah. until October, yeah. so. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> my light level's close, though. 7.30, trying to get up to that 7.50 before. I heard that there's going to be a lot of auto-leveling stuff, so don't put too much into it. No, I'm, I'm, I was just, my friend, uh, my friend Mitch wanted to play last night, and so that's we were just trying to find stuff to do, and I just happened to level up while I was. Uh, oh no! What I'm saying though, like when uh, Shadowkeep comes out, like it'll they basically gonna you know what they do? They like, yeah. give you stuff that if you've been playing, it'll get you up to 750 real quick. Yeah, so I'm planning on using that on my hunter. So, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, but that's kind of all I've really been playing. I did play a little bit more Fire Emblem also, but I'm still trying to grind my characters up so I can just finish it and and start a new playthrough or do something or play astral chain or zelda or something soon so uh, that's mm-hmm. that's that goal at least uh so we're gonna move into some of this news we might cut some of it out just because some of it's not really that important we're just not gonna lie to you it's just you know uh that's not the right show look at me look at me being awesome at this uh our first story is kind of a sad one uh, GameStop to close up to 200 stores. Uh, the company posted a $32 million loss in Q2 this year. Uh, just two months after GameStop announced uh, ambitious plans to breathe new life into its stores, the company has announced that between 180 and 200 stores around the world will be closing their doors for good before the year is out and more closures are coming. The company's balance sheet has not looked healthy in recent times. Its second quarter uh, global sales decreased 14.3%, making an adjusted net loss of $32 million. As such, GameStop CFO James Bell announced that up to 200 underperforming stores will be closed between now and the end of the year. In the company's recent earnings call, Bell added that uh, while these closures were not uh, were more optimistic, while these closures were more opportunistic, we are applying... 
Wow. Uh, we are applying. Words are hard. A, I know. <laughs> especially when they get past, like, one syllable. Uh, we are applying a more definitive analytic approach, including profit levels and sales transferability. Wow. Uh, that we expect will yield a much larger tran tranche? 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 Of closers? Stop using fancy words. Just say you're closing stores. Uh, what is this word? T-R-A-N-C-H-E. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Despite these closures and effort to revamp the better performing stores, it's unlikely that GameStop's fortunes will change anytime soon, thanks largely to the end of the current console generation and subsequent weaker title launches. Uh, so that uh, article is from Engadget. There's more articles there if you want to read that. But uh, yeah, future GameStop's not looking good, guys. Random French word, by the way, tranche. Tranche. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Use a regular word, you nerds. Nerd. <laughs> French <laughs> nerd. That's how you know they're nerds. <laughs> Just trying to use like. Don't get fancy Tranche. with me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, in gadget. That's cool. Um. Well, no, I just. Uh, GameStop had a chance a while ago to innovate. And they decided to go for merchandise, which is just immediately more money. And it did not work well for them. <laughs> nope. And they like, chose ah. to open up four stores within five minutes of me. Ex ex well, exactly. <laughs> they just did not. I They're... feel like they didn't do a good enough job of controlling their brand, uh, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they just kind of were like, ah, let's make money. And just, you know, they'll buy this stuff. And when they bought um, Think Gink, I was like, okay, that was a weird move. Um yeah. I think we've talked about this before because I was like, you know, there was a chance where I'm pretty sure they could have bought Redbox and that would have been the much smarter move. Yep. <laughs> but yep. Uh, I don't know. It's just GameStop has made a bunch of bad choices. Uh, I will say that um, anybody who I've ever talked to, uh, well, I won't say anybody, everybody, but most people that I've talked to who's worked at a GameStop has had a, a, not a great experience. I mean, you've had decent experiences, but I've never heard somebody just be like, oh, yeah, GameStop was one of the best jobs I ever had because of the way they run their stores. Um so, I mean, it's just GameStop could do a lot of things to help itself, and they just didn't. And so this is why we're here. <laughs> this is where we are now. And they're trying to innovate, I feel like, a little too late. And so hopefully what they're planning to do helps them survive, because I like GameStop. GameStop is, I'm, I gl I'm glad it exists. I just know that it could be far better than it is. Yeah. Um, in we, terms actually, of we actually, in the, in my mixer chat here we actually have a a former gamestop employee and she said working there was frustrating so exactly i'm i'm also a former gamestop employee and like you know there were times where it was cool but most times sucked because it was like oh they would never give us the hours that we needed to get all the work done that we needed to do it was uh -huh. it was a mess most times and uh so i feel gamestop is not important but it's nice to have as a gamer yeah um so I, I hope it doesn't just disappear because that would suck because, you know, have you tried buying a game at Target? You know, it's not always the best experience. <laughs> Sometimes the game's not there. Exactly. Well, uh, so, yeah. Ahead, and just... I well, and I think the like, you know, like you touching on them, not like kind of not giving you either enough manpower or enough, you know, like time to be able to get stuff done. The thing is, is, like, you know, like, it's obviously, it's obvious that the people who ran the company don't know anything about games and, and the gaming industry and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Because most people, when you go, you know, like us that love video games, when you go to a GameStop, you wanted to talk about games or, you exactly. know, like, it's, it's always been. It's so the you, the aspect. And that's yeah, what I've been told about it. Yeah, and and so only having one person or two people running one person a lot of times running a big store, it's like how how do you expect them to both, you know, get these sales that you're always, you know, like hassling them about and get everything else done and talk to the, you know, talk to the people mm -hmm. and, you know, give, you know, because the personalities are the reasons why I liked going to GameStop. It's because it was always cool people that worked there. Yep. But unfortunately, the company didn't know what it was doing. Yeah. 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 So, no, I feel like uh, GameStop, I... 
I'm curious to see what they do to save themselves at this point. Um, but who knows? I, I like I said, I I like GameStop, and you, you're exactly right, Jesse. I I even decided to get a job at GameStop because I like the people that work there. I thought they were super cool, and it was awesome to be able to talk with other people about video games, and uh, hopefully help them make some informed decisions. But I mean, we'll see. We will see. I, you know, I've I know a lot of people that used to work or still work at GameStop, and like you know, it's it's just sad that this is happening, especially because like that's a lot of jobs, you know. Yeah. Oh yes, I saw somebody in the chat say something about holidays at GameStop. Yeah, holidays at GameStop sucked. Yeah. Absolute cheeks. <laughs> so bad. But you know what? Most times we survived, and I got my ten minute break. And I would go back to work. <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah. So hopefully that's different. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was talking to my wife this morning, uh, coincidentally before we started, and I said, you know what? What if these next consoles come out and they suck? GameStop is officially dead. <laughs> mm-hmm. If, <laughs> if they even make, even if they well, make, they got to make it to next holiday first. I think they'll make it to the next holiday. I just think if these next consoles come out and they do not do well, like say they're overpriced and they are not as much of an upgrade as people are expecting, I feel like they could kill GameStop single-handedly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it would help them just be like, hey, we're just going to sell our games digitally now. <laughs> so, yeah. but I mean, also, I guess... I guess Funny I guess. story, adding to that again, though, GameStop's still specific. Did you know that they sell Epic Store codes at GameStop? Yeah, I did. They also did they also until... sell Steam codes or they also sell Steam uh, gift cards and codes and they also oh, they sell gift cards but like for Epic Store in particular they will sell you a Epic Store code for the game that you want. I bought Borderlands that way and had no idea that you could do that. Hmm. Uh, it was very interesting uh, and also I heard from them that they are now shifting back. They're adding. You remember how PC stuff disappeared from GameStop a few, uh-huh. like years ago? Mm-hmm. They're re-adding PC stuff to GameStop. Hmm. Uh, so. Now they're taking like computer gaming peripherals and trading stuff again, and they're selling more of it now. Uh, so yeah, you think they're they'll, desperate. You think they'll take my broken PC? <laughs> uh, who knows? <laughs> who knows? But I thought that was really interesting. We'll give like, you ten dollars. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're like, oh, we're we're getting back into PC gaming. I'm like, you should have never left. It's always been there. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, I think I think like honestly, what they really should do, and they you know very well they're not going to do it as far as jobs go instead of the four stores around me that only have one person working at it every day have those four people like switch off and be working at least like two or three people you know a week and you know kind of like like letting those people keep their jobs because just you know alone and and how much they're paying for rent for all those other stores not having to pay that anymore yeah in my opinion should you know not only be able to still keep those jobs but they're still going to end up saving money because they're not having to pay for rent all that rent because you know very well the rent on those places are usually like thousands and thousands especially because especially of mo- because of most money. of them are in in plazas with like targets and stuff yeah like, you know what i mean like they're just sitting yeah. there in a target plaza and target probably owns the plaza and charging so them an if, arm and a leg. if i was gonna so just kind of thinking about like how would i fix gamestop right now i would honestly i would take the apple store approach i honestly would i would clean up these stores simplify them um i would use a lot more digital um, displays. They don't use nearly enough digital displays for what GameStop is representing. You know what I'm saying? I don't think my. Like, I think my GameStop has like a small like. It's pro. It's probably my computer monitor is probably bigger than the TV they have that runs GameStop TV. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They. I think they need to have like a, a video. Like they need all these stores. Need to have a video wall that's got like <laughs> this is like the top games. This is the stuff that's trending. Like they. Yeah. They need to embrace the year that we live in. Uh, yeah. Honestly. I feel like if you made your stores more appealing to be in, mm-hmm. uh, it would keep people coming to your stores. Is it really needs to start there? Because a lot of all the game stops I've ever been in are ugly, and they got they all got that sh- same sh- stupid carpet. And it's like <laughs> just make your stores nicer, like unif- like I yeah, make them more uniform. Yeah. I, yeah. There's a there's a whole lot they could be doing they could have done that they just didn't do. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. No, I... together. 
it should look like a yeah, it should look like a buffalo wild wings in there. <laughs> it says screens enough, everywhere. Is connected to a buffalo wild. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Wow. Uh, all right, Throw we're gonna some ninja on a mixer <laughs> up on the TV or something. Wow, yeah, something. <laughs> wow. All right, we're gonna jump into our next story here. Uh, Apple revealed their new line of phones, but they also revealed the details on Apple Arcade this past week. Uh, It launches next week or this week when it posts live on podcast services for $5 a month. Uh, This comes from Game Informer. Hopefully we'll be reading from here in a year or so. Uh, I would be be really sad if Game Informer went away. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, I know. I I honestly, not to get off track or anything, but I honestly thought, GameStop was going to sell off Game Informer before they started laying off people. But that's just me. So. I think it's the best thing so, Apple going. Arcade. Apple I Arcade. Was not, I was not anticipating them announcing this. Um, at first, I didn't know it was a subscription service. I just thought Apple Arcade was a different, you know, part of the App Store, which I enjoy the App Store. App Store is pretty cool. I thought they were going to change Game Center over to. I thought, like, this would right. take place Same. of Game Center. So when they were like, oh, it's a subscription service, I go first. I was like, mm, I really I had the, the kombucha girl gift response. <laughs> so I was like, wait a minute, another <laughs> subscription? Mm, okay, well, all right, fine, whatever. You know, $5, that ain't too bad. Uh, but I just, was, I was like, okay, another subscription. But I feel like they're adding some value to it. It's it's interesting. Like, I, I will be honest with you. I play a lot of games on my iPhone. I really do. I don't really play a lot on my iPad, but I play a lot on my iPhone. And for them to be like, eh, Friday night, you can play any of these games, and you can play them all offline. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest deal to me. I mm-hmm. like, I hate being somewhere without a, a connection, which is most times on a plane. And I'm like, I don't feel like playing my Switch yet, you know. And I'm like, I just want to do something on my phone. And all the games I want to play require a connection. I'm like, this is freaking stupid. What's mm-hmm. the point? <laughs> so, it, sounds, it sounds like something that Xbox has. I forget what it's called. <laughs> Oh, you something, <laughs> something they used to have, LOL? <laughs> no, the Game Pass where you can actually download uh, the games and well, play them. Like, not the it's, it's nice in that format, but I feel like if they had... Remember remember Xbox Arcade for real? Xbox Live Arcade? Yeah. You remember? Yeah. yeah. That was amazing. I love that. Should have kept yeah. that. It would have been a good idea. Um, remember PlayStation lo- Home, guys? No. LOL, nobody wants Whoa. to. <laughs> <laughs> remember nobody when you... Nobody wants to. Uh, oh, but I, I like Apple Arcade. I like the idea of it. It's just now I know Apple has the right idea. They're like, we are making billions of dollars. Let us do. Let's do something for our customers and make it cheaper for them to get in on our services yep. instead of increasing the price of our services. They they understand. Oh yeah, we're making a ton of money. We don't have to uh, make this super expensive. And by my and by not making it super expensive, we make it competitive. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's interesting. Uh, I have the I have the list of of launch games here, which they said they're gonna add about a hundred games after their launch after their launch. So, uh, but Ballistic Baseball by Gameloft, uh, the Bradwell Conspiracy, Choo Choo Rocket Universe by Sega. Yes, choo-choo let's get rocket. some Choo Choo Rocket in there. Choo Choo Rocket. Uh, <laughs> the Enchanted World from Noodle Cake. I love these studio names. <laughs> Hot. I don't even know what that means. What's his uh, exit the gungeon from Devolver Digital, uh, which I guess is what a sequel to Enter the Gungeon. About to see, I think they said it's a sequel. Yeah, nice. Uh, Overland, uh, Pac Man Party Royale, Projection uh-huh. vs. Light from Blowfish, Rayman Mini, uh, which is a new <laughs> in the style of Rayman Origins. Uh, All right. Shantae and the Seven Sirens from Way Forward. That's an interesting game to put on there. Uh, Skate uh, Skate City by Snowman. Man, so many people got so excited and they're disappointed at the same time. <laughs> I know. Uh, Skate. <laughs> nope. Nope. Uh, Sneaky Sasquatch. Steven Universe Unleashed the Light. Super Impossible Road. And Various Day Life, which is by the Bravely Default and Project Octopath Traveler team. So uh yeah that's that's super interesting uh, so i mean it's it's cool i hope you know you can use a controller with some of these games but you know i think this is i i don't i man all these subscription services man exactly there's a lot it's too many now there's too many so 
But uh, so I'm like, it's cool, and it's I think it's what a family subscription for five ninety nine. Yep, which is impressive. That's pretty well, cool. And you could yeah, share with up the what five other accounts? I think. I think so. so. And didn't they say that you can basically use your Xbox or PS4 controller? Yeah, they showed it? everything being played. They showed it being put like games being played there with the PS4 controller. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So Apple Arcade is coming to an iOS device near you. Let's move on to this next story, and we're going to skip the last story because it's not important. But this one, I feel like, is right up Ray's alley. Yeah, it better be. KFC <laughs> is making an anime dating game. No, <laughs> wrong story. Not this one. <laughs> Where you can date Colonel Sanders. What? <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> No, thank you. This also comes from Game Informer. Brace yourself. KFC is making a game called I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger-licking good dating simulator. <laughs> the Steam product listing for this unexpected release calls it the most delicious dating simulator ever created. Why didn't Why it, didn't they just make this an expansion for, like, uh, Sim, for Sims 4 or something? I don't know. Uh, way more popular if they'd done that. Let me tell you. Uh, you're... Uh, <laughs> Your goal is to win the heart of the most famous chicken salesman ever. You assume the role of a young culinary student who apparently has the eyes for Sanders. As you cook up what we presume is most mostly chicken recipes, you'll make, quote, life-changing decisions that will affect your chances of friendship and love. Along with Sanders, you'll confront other characters, including a dog and, well, what may be one of the best lists of features ever. Quote, Nine lovable characters, multiple hours of playthrough. This is playthrough, not pl- gameplay. Playthrough. Uh, dateable Colonel Sanders, a secret ending. Shh. Secret recipes. Double. Shh. Cooking battles. Battle battles. Uh, ear of ear of degree from a fictional culinary. Sc- earn it. I think it's supposed to be earn a degree from a fictional culinary school. Eleven herbs and spices. Cute miniature food and officially licensed by KFC. So, also, so see, the, also the cover is feature, featuring an anime version of Colonel Sanders, which is awfully disturbing. So, brands are going too far. Yep. <laughs> They're going too far. It's like this is one of those things where it's like, haha, maybe a bunch of influencers will give us a ton of free publicity by playing our game. Ha 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 ha. Just kidding. You know, we're making a game. That's what this is. <laughs> that is exactly what this is. Give us a bunch of free publicity because we made a dumb game. Ha ha, smile. Come on. Do you know that there's people that exist that wish that people would uh, make the the Burger King games backwards compatible? Yeah, yeah. Sneak Kings. There's a there's a, a, a meme gang that wants that. Yeah, I'm where's sure. where's my um, the what's that Cart- one? The, the mini bike racer. Yeah. No. No, thank you. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there are people who want it. I guarantee, just like there's people who are gonna actually want to play this game. Um, mm-hmm. I'm gonna play it for the memes because you know there's. I saw this. There's, there's a there's a, a thick character with three C's. I saw, and I'm like, well, Ooh, can we date that? Three C's. Three C's. I thought yeah, I thought thick. two was the limit. Three. No 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 no. Mm-hmm. She's thick with three C's. So I was like, I'm okay, too- if I date her in the game, I'm down. But uh, I don't care about Colonel Sanders. He can go. <laughs> Bye. Finger uh, lick, <laughs> he can go finger lick himself out of here. Whoa! Wow. I, just, I guess so. Yep. Wow. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh. So no, I don't. Mm-mm. I KFC game. Cool. Can't wait for the Wendy's side scroller. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's like Bionic Commando, and you just use Wendy's hair as like the. <laughs> oh no! It actually no. might be. No Wendy's. No life, Wendy's. In your life, is, it, but when you pick up a spicy nugget, you can throw fire. Oh That's my God! Uh, Wendy, Wendy's will Wendy's will be a a per rapper the rapper ripoff. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what yeah. other games you, have you ever heard? And then the, the McDonald's album that they released <laughs> for, the, for the people watching slash listening later on. Like what what other brand do you think is going to come out with a game? What kind of game do you think is going to be? Uh, uh, McDonald's uh, you know what's McDonald's gonna is going to be a, a, a I kind of feel like this is going to start a stupid trend. It's going to happen. So McDonald's is going to be a asymmetrical horror game where you're running oh. like kind of like Friday the Thirteenth or Dead by Daylight. But I hope it's, not. instead of instead of Ronald McDonald murdering you, he's just going to hand you like a a Big Mac or something. Oh, <laughs> oh, God. oh man! Oh, nope. Yeah. Go check out the Wendy's album Beef. <laughs> 
<laughs> I got beef or whatever it's called. <laughs> wow. All right. Our, <laughs> our last story here, uh, August top 20 best-selling games, uh, includes Astral Chain and Fire Emblem, among other big yes. Nintendo games. So uh, uh, It's a big deal that Astral Chain's on this list. I know. I know. It's a huge deal. Also, Is it, that a- all Nintendo games on NPD only include physical copies. That's amazing. It does not That's include amazing. digital. So it technically probably sold a ton more. Uh, the top 10 includes Madden NFL 20, uh, Minecraft, Grand Theft Auto 5, again. Of course. <laughs> uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Super Mario Maker 2, Mario Kart 8, Mortal Kombat 11, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, Marvel's Spider-Man. Wait, Still, no, I lied. Well, and Astral Chain. And then, yeah, after Chain before that, yeah. Uh, and then Sp- uh, Spider-Man and then Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild still making the top 20 at number mm-hmm. 12. Red Dead Redemption, Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, uh, Age of Wonders, Planetfall. Which I don't know what that is, by the way. I don't way. either. Must be interesting if it made I'll the top do some 20. some research, yeah. Uh, looks like a game Ray needs to stream. Jump yep. shot, Ray. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Super Mario Party, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, The Dark Pictures, Man of Medan, and rounding out the top 20 is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So, But, yeah, I, I feel like for a Platinum game exclusive to Nintendo to make the top 10 I know. is a huge... Wait, is it, I don't know if it's top 10, but it makes a huge deal because this game it is, is so... It, it is number 10. It's so not what you would expect the public to pick up on and run with, but it's such a good game. It's true. It is so good. Like it is, it is a surprise of the year. It's, it's in my top. It's probably right now. It's in my top five for the year. Uh, I've just had such a blast with this game. It's so good. And if you play this game, you play Devil May Cry Five, you can be like, oh, no wonder he likes these games. Yeah. <laughs> but I love it. I just did not think that other people loved it, like we're picking it up as quickly. And I don't know if you look at that list. I mean, if you heard him talk going through this list, that's a lot of Nintendo in the top ten. A lot. Yes. Uh, yes Nintendo it is. has a, and you know, the people are like, oh, but there's no games on Switch. I still people see, I still people see, still see people saying that. And I'm like, listen, Nintendo has some incredible games and they have an incredible system. And if you don't like it, that's on you. But you can't say that it doesn't have games because it's got plenty. I feel like the people still good. saying that are just people who play Call of Duty and Madden. And Maybe. even if those games were on Switch, they wouldn't play them there anyway. No. But I just, I this is this is looking good for Nintendo. Even going into this next gen, I feel like Nintendo's going to be fine. Um, yeah. They have so many good games. And golly, this, like, this is just the proof of the pudding. Honestly, yeah. it really is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think I think Switch is an incredible console, but I also think Xbox and PlayStation and PlayStation are incredible consoles in their own way too. At this point, and uh, to be honest with you, I'm not really ready for next gen. But I know like a lot of companies want to expand what their ideas are, and I feel like next gen is going to be a way longer generation than this one. I really, I really feel that way. Just because, like, I think they're finally going to hit the 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 point of like these co- these consoles are just as powerful as you want them to be, and I feel like they're going to do like pro versions of next gen consoles as well halfway through their lifespan to make them even more powerful. And uh, at this point, they're just scaling PC resolution at this point. So, yep. I mean, that's why Halo Infinite's coming out on both, right? And uh, mm-hmm. if you like, if you buy it on on an Xbox platform, you can play it on Xbox until you know, you know. So, but yeah. no, I just I I feel like um, these next consoles they have they have some work to do because, like you just said, you're anticipating a pro console, which means there could be people who just hold off and not buy one. Yeah, um, because they're like, oh, the pro consoles go, they're going to do a pro console, so why would I buy one? So these companies have they've kind of built themselves into a corner. Yeah, uh, it's like, well, uh, well, I don't need to buy the ne- the first version of it because they're not going to do much more than what they've done with the PS4 and the Xbox One X at this point. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like I can wait, and I feel like there could be a lot of people who are like that. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, there are people right now who are waiting to see what these next consoles are going to be, so they're not buying consoles, which is smart. But if they're like, oh yeah, we're not going to do a pro console because we're making it more powerful out of the box, that'd be smart to say out front. <laughs> it would be yeah. very smart to say that, I, <laughs> or else I, people are going to wait. 
I think we might we we'd probably be surprised though at how many people are still running the original Xbox One oh, yeah. or yeah. Oh, I, or even I, you know I maybe the S. So because there's probably a the, lot of people that are holding off. I think what's the number? Like only two percent of Xbox users are on the Xbox One X. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would be surprised if. Yeah, well, the, I mean, the S is so cheap, Xbox. though. Like, the S is so cheap. Yeah. You can find it for yeah. under 150 bucks all the time. Like, that is a cheap mm-hmm. console. And it's a good console, you know? I'm not, like, mm-hmm. dogging people who can't get an X, but, like, you know... You it, don't need an X. No, That's the thing. Yeah, that, I mean... One. Yeah. It's, but it's sure nice when you're playing Gears it is, of War and you have it's it. It's nice to have. Yeah, I mean, low, I like low times. Nice, but I, I don't need it, it's, but it's nice. Yeah, so... Uh, Load times are definitely better and stuff like that. So it's more of those kind of little things, yeah. You know that that it, that it's better for. But yeah, I I I think I think a lot of people are holding off. Were holding off and didn't get an X because they they knew we were so close to to the you know the end of the 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 gen, you know the generation. So mm-hmm. I think I think I think they'll do pretty pretty well, even with. Even with uh, with PS4, I feel like more people probably bought a Pro than people bought, you know. See, I think I think the, it's the, the other X, way around. I think more people bought a, more people bought an X. Well, I'm with Jesse on that one. I think more people bought the Pro than they bought the X. Really? I I just I feel like the the difference. I'm pretty sure the Pro was still more affordable um, than the X. It was cheaper well, still. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. I feel like the and I feel like the games didn't run very well on the original ps4 whereas with the I mean, with the honestly xbox don't run a whole lot much better on the pro i know <laughs> I, well that's that's I, like the thing i'm I way mean, ha- i'm way happier with my x upgrade than i am with my pro upgrade i'll just uh yeah okay. same <laughs> uh, like yeah. The, the pro was not much of a, a like a decent upgrade for the playstation it, it it helped a little tiny bit but not enough to notice like the x is mm-hmm. so yeah. That's why I kind of feel like PlayStation has. They, I, I feel like just out of the gate, they will have an advantage mm-hmm. uh, because they're compensating for what the four wasn't when mm-hmm. it comes to comparing it to the Xbox One X. Just plus, in general, plus announcing that that console will be back backwards compatible too. Exactly. Is, is... So that, that I, I do feel like yeah, Sony will kind of have uh, another, another foothold again, just coming out of the gate going mm-hmm. next year. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, but that's all speculation. But I mean, <laughs> like I said, I. I do want one of these new consoles at launch, but I got, I'm going to wait till the right game comes out. Oh, hundred percent! Right? I'm, I mean, I'm, I will be waiting. I used I've been like hundred percent launch night for the past three, no, two consoles, mm-hmm. and I'm like this time I'm like nah, I'm absolutely going to wait. Yeah, uh, and see which one even has like, the games that I want to play, and which one's even worth the money. I also want to see. I also want to see like is Halo worth upgrading for too? You know, like that is that's, another really good question. That's yep. the thing is like I do want a uh, Xbox Scarlet for Halo, but is Halo Infinite worth upgrading for? Uh-huh. And if I buy it on Xbox One when I am ready to upgrade, will my like will everything just carry over? Will I automatically be upgraded to the Scarlet version? That kind mm-hmm. of thing because these are mm-hmm. like. We're getting that blurry line of like, you know, especially Xbox where it's like, well, it could be cross gen. You don't know. You know what I mean? Like everything is going to be cross gen now, <laughs> basically, because everything's backwards yeah. compatible. They're they're using like a, I mean, I know they're not using the Windows Universal system, but like, you know, the the icons on the Xbox One on the Xbox One don't say Xbox One on them. Your game yeah. icons, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be more well, like like buying a library of PC games now. Well, and having the One X, like I really don't think we're gonna have to worry about stuff, you know, like having a hard time running on it. This, you know, early, you know, early on, mm-hmm. um, because you know, especially like me, I don't even have a 4K anything yet, so I, know, I, I don't, don't even need to worry about 4K or any of that stuff. So I'm, I'm, you know, it's still running it at a lower resolution for yeah. me. Yeah. So it, it, it's just not going to be an issue for a while, um, because I do plan on getting one, uh, you know, as soon as I have the money for it. But I'm I'm not going to be like stressing about it because I just don't don't need to. Yeah. There's there's a there's a lot of things you know there's a lot of stuff that we need to see about it. Um, you know, like moving forward. I mean, like for me, honest, like honestly, if they if they focus more on 
uh, like the streaming and like video editing and things like that. Let's say they were to like like really go go full on with like like having it where you can actually like edit videos and stuff right on your right on the the new console like more so than what you can right now like actually record you know record video and like save a, like not just only be able to record two minute sections of a video or whatever actually be able to record a full you know like stream or something directly onto the console and edit it on it like mm-hmm. if they were to do stuff like that honestly that would push me to want to buy a, a new one sooner for you know just because i I'd, I'd rather be able to do that stuff on the console than have to get a pc for it yeah but which which I you mean, can do I, on the I'm ps4 a, now yeah in can all you? honesty yeah i mean you can yeah, record that, i mean you can record gameplay clips and then edit it on the console and send it out if you need yeah. to but yeah. i don't know if that works with with streaming or not but yeah We'll see. I think the next console generation is going to be super fascinating to watch, especially. It will because, be interesting, especially because, like, you know, that I, like I said, I don't know if I'm even ready to upgrade. You know, like I would be fine if these consoles were like two years away still. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, we're gonna save questions for next week because we are. Oh, I'm I'm way out of time, but uh, Uh-oh. we're we're <laughs> I know. <laughs> But uh, anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching and listening to the NX show. Remember, you can watch us live on Mixer and on Twitch. Uh, just follow the NX show on those on on Twitter and Instagram and join our Facebook group, join our Discord, all that stuff. Ray, where can we find you? Well, you can find me multiple places on the internet, but I want you to focus on three places. You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Ray Apollo. You can find me on twitter.com, whatever the username is, but Ray Apollo. And then also on YouTube. Also look for me there. Ray Apollo, your boy, making some good content for you every week. You can also Smile. you can also go to codenamenx.com slash Ray Apollo and all of his information is there. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, Jesse, where can we find you? You can find me uh, just about anywhere at Phantom NXS. Um, I'm still having an issue with changing my name on Mixer. I don't know why it keeps on saying that you can only change your name once per month. And I could have swore it's been over a month since I changed it. So I'm hoping soon <laughs> I can change that to not having two N's. <laughs> it's just but, a, it's just a double N. Yeah. Just <laughs> on one a lowercase and then an up and then an uppercase. Yeah. So, but I want to change that. I don't know. I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah. Uh, well, you can find me at Corian HD seven one three on Twitter. You can also find me on Instagram and Mixer at Corian HD. Hope you'll give us all a follow, a like, a subscribe, a share, a rating, a review on your podcast service of choice, and on Spotify. Check out our YouTube page. Check out codenamenx.com and all that other good stuff. We will see you next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you. <laughs>